Hello, AACPS teachers. Welcome to the January 2020 vodcast brought to you by the Office of Instructional Technology. This month, we're going to take a look at the new collaborative projects feature built in your online Google Earth. So what's changed is they've given you a new tool on your toolbar here on the left hand side that allows teachers and students to create collaborative maps. I want you to think of these as being like the Voyager stories that we love in Google Earth, but now we have the ability to create them ourselves instead of using the professionally curated ones that Google has available for us. In this vodcast, we're going to talk about how you can search and save the various places that you'd like to put into a project. We're going to look at how you can change your view so that it's not always that top-down aerial view um, of the roof of a building, but how you can really customize that option. We're going to see how you can customize everything about a place mark, like adding images and text and even changing the marker itself. We're going to see a set of tools that Google Earth provides for teachers and students to easily and quickly create uh, these projects. We're going to see how they can share uh, projects so that they can collaborate, work together with other editors, but also so that they could share it view only if they just wanted to share their finished project. And then finally, where does your Google Earth project save? We're going to see and talk about those save locations. So let's go ahead and get out of this presentation. And let's get into Google Earth. So you'll see over here on my toolbar on the left-hand side that I now have this projects option here. And when I click on it, it's going to open my projects window. If I had any existing projects, I would see them here. I can even open projects that are saved in Drive. But I also have this new project button right here. So we're going to click to create a new one. And I'm going to title this one National Zoo, because that's what we're going to visit today as a part of this vodcast. I can type a description for anybody to tell them what's going to be included in my project. And when I'm ready to go, I click on search. And let's get to the Washington, D.C. National Zoo. So just as we would expect when we type in a location on Earth, we're going to fly to that location. It's going to open an information card on the right hand side. But what's changed is I now have this button at the bottom that says add to project. And when I click, it gives me an option to give it a title and asks me which project I'd like to put it in. If I hadn't already clicked to create my new project, I can create a new project from right here. So we're going to click to save this location. And we have our first location in our new project. Let's go ahead and do a second search. And this time I'm going to get a little closer. I'm going to find the Ape House at the National Zoo. And it's going to zoom us down and put its marker right there on the Ape House. I'm going to click on Add to Project. But instead of clicking Save this time, I'm going to click to edit this location. And what I want to do is I want to change the view of the Ape House. So I'm going to scroll down. And then I'm also going to swing my mouse across over here so that we're not just looking at the Ape House, but we're also looking at those climbing structures that the National Zoo has available for the apes. So once I'm happy with the view that I have here, I'm going to click on Capture This View in the bottom left. And this location has now been added to my project in addition to the National Zoo. I even get the ability to customize the place marker that we're adding, change the color of it, I can see the tilt and heading and range, latitude and longitude that I have. Notice there is no save option because this is Google. Everything saves automatically. So I can exit out of this and I can see that I now have two locations saved in the project I'm creating for the National Zoo. Now this time instead of doing a search, I'm just going to manually move to a location at the zoo that I'm familiar with and that's the panda exhibit. And we're going to zoom in just a little bit here. And we're going to click to add a place mark here and I'm going to drop it oh right about over here and we're going to call this panda exhibit. But once again, before I click Save, I'm going to click on Edit. And what I really want to do 
is I want to see if I can find a good street view image. Because if I want to show off the panda exhibit, I don't want to be looking down at some grassy little field here with a fence around it. I want to see if I can get a panda. So I'm going to drop Pegman on one of these photo spheres here. And let's scroll around and see. There he is. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here until I'm really happy with this picture of the panda I have. And once again, I'm going to click capture this view. So you can get right down to street view imagery when you're capturing a view. Because I custom made my own place mark, I even have the ability to add my own images and my own text over here. So if I click on the picture option, not only can I upload my own pictures or search for something I have on Google Drive, but I can do a Google image search from right Right here, I can find this cute picture of a panda trying to climb up that log. And then once it loads one picture, I have the picture option here again to keep clicking and adding more images if I'd like. I can even type in, let's say this is Bebe, was born at the National Zoo in 2015 and left for China in 2019. Bye bye, baby. Then we have an option here to change between the small information box or a large information box. If I hadn't included any text and I didn't want to put in any pictures, I can certainly choose no information box so that nothing uh, opens over there on the right hand side to obstruct our view. If I click on the small info box, I can choose preview presentation up here at the top to see what that's going to look like. So this is where my information would open in one of these smaller white cards in the upper right hand corner. And if I click this arrow to the left to back out of this view, I can change it to the large information box and then choose preview to see what that looks like. So the large information box really fills the entire right hand side of the screen with the picture at the top. If there were multiple pictures, I'd have arrows to click and scroll through those. And then that information that I typed down underneath as well. So let's click to get out of this one more time. And additionally, we have that same option to change our marker and change the marker color if we would like to. So once again, we're going to exit out of this view and we're just going to zoom out a little bit on the zoo. And let's talk about this quick access tool set that they have here. Not only do I have the ability to click and manually add a place mark as I did just a moment ago with the panda exhibit, I can just click and then I can click on any building location that I would like to give it my own name. But the other option that we have in this quick access toolbar is to draw lines or shapes. So if you wanted to indicate a path to get from point A to point B, or even draw a shape to indicate the entire route or trip that we're going to take around the zoo. So let's say we were going to start at the elephant house here. So I'm going to click right here on the elephant house. And then our next destination at the zoo is going to be the small mammal house. Then we're going to go to the ape house. We're going to go to the sea lion pool. And I'm just moving my mouse and clicking on each of these locations. Finally, we're going to go see those adorable pandas. And then we're going to wrap back up by meeting over here at the elephant house. When you click back on your original destination, it's going to fill in or close that polygon for you. So I can call this our trip around the zoo. And once again, before I click Save, let's click on Edit to see those additional options. I can choose pictures. Um, so as we traveled around the zoo, I could put in the pictures we took from the elephant house, the mammal house, the ape house, and so on. I can type that text information to say we started at the elephant house, we went to the small mammal house, this is what we saw at each of them. I can even change the color or line border around the outside of my polygon here, but I can also change choose to fill it in. So if it's meaningful to have some sort of um, color fill in the center to indicate area, not just the path around the outside, I can add that as well. And then we have these additional options down here to change your latitude, longitude, heading, and so forth manually if you don't want to do that by just scrolling and clicking and dragging on the map. 
So let's back out of this view for a second and see what we've created so far. So in our project, we have that first landing point, National Zoo. We have the Great Ape House, we have the Panda Exhibit, and we have our trip around the zoo. When you are finished with a project, you have the ability to click here to present this project to your audience. So if, if teachers wanted to bring students up to the board and have them present it, or if the teacher was creating it for the students, they can just put this up on the smart board and click present. And we start off taken to that first view where we were just looking down at the zoo. And then we get our ability to navigate through the different locations here in the bottom left where it says table of contents. So when we click to go to the second view, we come down to that exact view of the ape house we had where we can see those climbing structures, click again, and we're going to jump over to the panda exhibit, go all the way down to that photosphere where we can see Bebe and finally come back out to that aerial view where we're looking at that polygon we created that has the path that we're going to walk around the zoo when we take our trip. So that is presenting your project. The other option that you have here at the very top in your project creation window is your share button. This share option is pretty much exactly the same as if you were sharing any other Google file. You can invite somebody to be a part of your project. You can make them an editor or give them view only access. You even have the ability to click up here to get a shareable link. And then you could take this link and you could give it to anybody and everybody who wants to see your project and make them all viewers on it. So if you don't have uh, the ability to present to them face to face right now, you can take that link and give it out to them as well. I'm not going to share this. I'm going to go ahead and click done. So the last thing that we need to talk about with these projects is where do they save? Well, first off, every project that you save is going to be here under your projects tab. So when you click on this, you'll see the project that you created right there and you'll be able to pull them up and access them. But that only works on this exact computer. If I sit down at a different computer and I open Google Earth, I do not see projects that I created on, an, on a different computer. However, Everything that you create in the new Google Earth projects goes to your Google Drive. So the first time you click to create a project, it's going to create a folder for you in Google Drive called Google Earth. When you open this folder, you'll see every project that you've ever created saved here in your Google Earth folder. One way to open the projects is simply to double click from where you see them here in your Google Drive. That will launch Google Earth and it will load your project for you. But the other option that you have for accessing a project that you've already created is from here inside of Google Earth in the projects area. So if we click on projects over here and right here where it says new project, in addition to being able to create a new project and import things called KML files, you can also open a project from your Google Drive. So if you already have Google Earth open, this might be more convenient than exiting out of here to go to your drive to simply pull it in by opening this embedded Google Drive window. So I would like to thank you guys for watching the vodcast today. This is a really exciting new feature in Google Earth that we have been waiting for for some time now. If you have any questions about how to use Google Earth, you can always contact your teacher specialist at the Office of Instructional Technology or speak to your school's e-coach. We'd love to invite you to follow us on Twitter at AACPSOIT. We are on Pinterest. AACPSOIT. And finally, follow and subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is also AACPSOIT. Thanks, everybody.